What are you doing with God's offer of a second chance? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. The Department of Social Services in Greenville County, South Carolina, sent the following letter to a deceased individual. Your food stamps will be stopped effective March 1992 because we received notice that you passed away. May God bless you. You may reapply if there is a change in your circumstances. Today is the feast day of St. Pope John Paul II. St. John Paul II is perhaps one of the most well-known pontiffs in recent history and is most remembered for his charismatic nature, his love of youth, and his world travels, along with his role in the fall of communism in Europe during his 27-year papacy. The Nazi occupation forces closed the university in 1939, and young Carroll had to work in a quarry and then in the Solvay chemical factory to earn his living and to avoid being deported to Germany. He's the only pope, at least in modern times, to have been a laborer. In 1942, aware of his call to the priesthood, he began courses in the underground seminary of Krakow. He was forced to flee as the Nazi Germans killed Jews and Slavs, considered as an inferior race. When Russia invaded Poland later, he returned to resume his clandestine studies. He distinguished himself at the Second Vatican Council, now as an auxiliary bishop of Krakow. The cardinals elected him pope at the conclave of 16 October 1978, and he took the name of John Paul II. He became the first non-Italian Pope in 455 years. He made pastoral visits to 124 countries, including several with small Christian populations. John Paul II promoted ecumenical and interfaith initiatives, especially the 1986 Day of Prayer for World Peace in Assisi. He visited Rome's main synagogue and the Western Wall in Jerusalem. He also established diplomatic relations between the Holy See and Israel. He improved Catholic-Muslim relations and in 2001 visited a mosque in Damascus, Syria. Relations with the Orthodox churches improved considerably during his papacy. His love for young people brought him to establish the World Youth Days. The 19 WYDs celebrated during his pontificate brought together millions of young people from all over the world. At the same time, his care for the family was expressed in the World Meetings of Families, which he initiated in 1994. With the year of the redemption, the Marian year, and the year of the Eucharist, he promoted the spiritual renewal of the Church. On May 13, 1981, John Paul was shot in the abdomen and nearly killed by a 23-year-old Turkish man, Mehmet Ali Agka. John Paul later publicly forgave his would-be assassin who had shot him on the feast day of the Virgin of Fatima. John Paul said the Virgin had saved his life by guiding the bullet away from his vital organs. In May 2000, the Vatican announced that the mysterious third message the Virgin gave the peasant children in Fatima, Portugal, in 1917 was a vision of the 1981 assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II. It gave an extraordinary impetus to canonizations and beatifications, focusing on countless examples of holiness as an incentive for the people of our time. He celebrated 147 beatification ceremonies during which he proclaimed 1,338 blesseds, and 51 canonizations for a total of 482 saints. He made Therese of the Child Jesus a doctor of the Church. He promulgated the Catechism of the Catholic Church in the light of tradition as authoritatively interpreted by the Second Vatican Council. He also reformed the Eastern and Western codes of canon law, created new institutions, and reorganized the Roman Curia. On April 27, 2014, he was canonized by Pope Francis during a ceremony in St. Peter's Basilica. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus mentions two events where lives were lost. One was the slaughter of some Galileans in the temple. The New American Bible notes the following. From what is known about Pilate from the Jewish historian Josephus, such a slaughter would be in keeping with the character of Pilate. Josephus reports that Pilate had disrupted a religious gathering of the Samaritans on Mount Gerizim with the slaughter of the participants, and that on another occasion, 
Pilate had killed many Jews who had opposed him when he appropriated money from the temple treasury to build an aqueduct in Jerusalem. Jesus also mentioned 18 people killed when a tower in Siloam in the southeastern section of Jerusalem's wall fell on top of them. And then Jesus launches into a parable of a barren fig tree. We can surmise from this story of God's infinite patience. He allows us to repent for our sins. Though he may not have caused the tragedies that have befallen man, he allowed them to happen to provide man a backdrop of how one's fallen nature can proceed to create suffering for others. We do not know when our time will come nor how it will transpire, but like the fig tree, we are given a second chance to bear fruit. Now is the time to take stock of how we have treated God and others in our life. We can repent and be forgiven now before it is too late. We are also asked to give love and forgiveness to those who have transgressed us. Let us take advantage of the second chances God gives us daily before it is too late. Now is the time. Tomorrow may never come. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, as you have given me many second chances, may I give life to others who also need a second chance by me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.